Hey, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Oh. So we're, we're finishing today with God's help. The um, the mamar, the speech, actually, the tr transformed into an essay of the first Rebbe of Chabad in the book, which is called Torah Or, on the first sentence in this week's Torah portion and how it applies to us spiritually. And we've talked about this many times, that Judaism is certainly spiritual, and certainly it's also physical. So it's a religion. We have these rituals and things and commandments, but it's also very spiritual because there's a lot of intentions of what, we, <clears throat> what we're supposed to think when we do the commandments and how it's connected to God and what happens when we do the commandments. But more than anything else, Judaism is godly, which what does it mean godly? Godly means that we're serving the creator of the universe. And the, what does the creator of the universe want? He wants that he should be revealed in his creation. That's what he wants. He wants he should be that, oh, let, let's put it in, in, in another way. He wants us to appreciate and improve the creation. God himself is creating the world. And he wants us to appreciate it as his creation. Huh? What is it? The, the, that's basically what, the, man, we're creating God's image. People also want appreciation a little bit, right? People want to be appreciated. People want to feel that others care about them. Well, the same thing is with God. God put that into us because God is the same thing. God also wants to be appreciated. That's not too much to ask. And we believe that God is creating everything. And which means it's not just a philosophical thing. I mean, he's, the world is really here. And, you know, how is it? How did it get here? So we can say, well, just here, that's all. You know, it's just, it's a question you just don't ask. It's just here, you know. Or we can say, no, God is create. God created it. He created it a long time ago and it's here. Or we can say God is creating it right now. And Hasidut says, not only is God creating it right now, but he's creating it for a purpose. And one of those things is he wants us to appreciate it and to approve it improve it, improve it. So that's why he put the Holy Temple here in the world. He put the Holy Temple in the world so that we'll be able to improve the world according to God's standards, according to the Creator's standards. And that's the whole idea of the Holy Temple. That's the whole idea of the Torah and the commandments, but especially it all rolled around into the Holy Temple. So when the Jews left Egypt and they received the Torah, it says in the Torah immediately, you have to make a um, a temple. You have to make a temple. You have to make a holy place, a building, actually physical building that tells even the details of the building uh, what, what, and what you're supposed to do in this building. Okay, so one of the things that says to in the building, there's a sentence, and this is the sentence we're talking about. And then Moses says to the Jewish people, the, who take me itchem from yourselves, truma Lashem, a offering, a truma, and the Rebbe points out the word truma also means to elevate. To Romem, a truma to Hashem. And this we just spent the last four days discussing what this means, what these words mean. And it means that you have to elevate yourself to the creator. Elevate yourself to the creator. What does that mean? <clears throat> and the whole thing of the creator is that he's creating the world. So what do you elevate? You don't leave the world. Right? You're leaving the world. God is creating you. He wants you to be here, but he wants you to be here and to appreciate him. And that's what he described uh, before. And we said a ma mainly, the main way of doing it is by accepting what's called the yoke. By, <clears throat> by forcing yourself to leave yourself. What does it mean elevate yourself? Not to do necessarily what you want and to <clears throat> Yes, to do what God wants. So that's called accepting the yoke. In other words, you realize you learn the Torah, you realize what's right and what's wrong. And those things that it says in the Torah that are right, you force yourself to do it. Might not, you might not have to force yourself. Maybe you'll enjoy doing it. But nevertheless, you force yourself to do these things. Force yourself. And those things that are prohibited, you force yourself not to do only because it says in the Torah, because that's what God wants. So that's what's called eskafia. You force yourself. Now, one of the things that God wants you to do is to love, 
to appreciate him. Like we said before, so you have to force yourself <coughs> to appreciate God and force yourself at least to try to love God. Love has to be genuine, not just to pretend. So you have to. So that's what's called a truma to Hashem. This whole idea of forcing yourself. It's called eskafia. And it says, when that happens, it says the glory of God is revealed in the whole world, and you can actually feel it. What do you feel? You feel that you're being created. You feel, how do you say, not alone. You feel you have a purpose in life, and that the purpose is greater than you, and bigger than you. You're being created every single instant for a purpose. You feel it. You feel it a little bit. It's called inspiration. Huh? Inspiration. It's called comfort. It's called peace. It's called called uh, uh, motivation. <clears throat> but you feel that it's real. You feel that the God of Israel is infinitely good and infinitely correct, true. Okay, that's number one. But then after that, so that's what we talked about, and we said that that brings down this level of godliness called Soviv Chomim, above all understanding, the King of the Universe. That's what we said, Melech Olam, King of the Universe. Reveals it, okay. But then there's another level, and that's hinted at the end of the sentence. This is the truma to God. Then it says, "Call Nadiv Libo. Anyone who has a genuine, generous heart will bring his trum is his truma. So will bring the truma of God. You view at truma Hashem. Anyone who has a gen a generous heart will bring." The elevation of God. Here we said the elevation to God. And here's the elevation of God. And this is implying something that comes from above to below. We bring down. But here we're talking about bringing up, lifting yourself up. Here we're talking about bringing down the gift, the, the elevation of God. Okay, now let's see what this means. Let's go. Let's see. Ready? Here we go. The elevation of God. From God, if you want to call it. Here we go. Let's see. Next page. Next page, I think. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Oh, here it is. Okay. Here we go. And afterwards, Kativ, it is written, call on the Div Libo, anyone who's a generous heart, <coughs> they will bring a Trumat Hashem, the gift of God, the elevation of God. In other words, they will bring from above to below. Who begins Hamshacha? This is drawing down godliness from above to below. This is Truma, the whole idea of the word Truma. We said means to elevate, but here the word truma also means hafrasha. <clears throat> it means to separate. <clears throat> God, so to speak, separates part of himself to this world. Truma is, good morning, truma is true tre mimea, two from 100, 50, uh, the, the, what is it called? The, the, two percent, two from 100. True tray mea from a namely what to be nimshach to draw down, namely nimshach to draw down from this level of God, which is we said before, Soviv Kalmim. This is the aspect of God, which is the king of the universe, above the universe, above all creation, above the spiritual. <clears throat> it's the name of God that creates everything constantly. Yud Shibarosh, the, the Yud at the beginning of the, God's name, Yud Kei Vav Kei, this indicates all Pu'ula, that God is doing something. Kamo Kacha Yaseb, this is what he is doing right now, all the time. Bechinus Havaya, Shibachinus Mamali Kalmin, Yud Kei Vav Kei. Okay, again, what, so what's going on over here? <clears throat> Maybe we can look at it like this. There's two aspects of reality. There's how everything is different from everything else. God is creating the, the heavens different than the earth, and he's different. <coughs> Excuse me. 
<clears throat> and there's all these different levels of spirituality. There's the world of Bria and Yetzir and adult, there's all these angels and all these souls. Everything is all different. God is creating everything differently and enlivening everything differently. That we said is called Memalikom, how God fills the world. But the fact that everything exists, the fact that everything exists, this is totally incomprehensible. The fact that everything is different one from the other, okay, we can say maybe a little bit, it's, we can understand a little bit. <clears throat> we can see what the difference between a cat and a dog is, what the difference between a tree and a house is, what the difference is. But the fact that everything exists, there's nothing to compare it to. The fact that everything is the only thing we can compare existence to is non-existence. We don't know what that means. What does it mean? Not something doesn't exist, right? There's, we have no comprehension of what that means. A vacuum. A vacuum is a thing. It's a vacuum. An empty space. There's a space. <clears throat> the fact that everything exists from nothing is totally incomprehensible. We have no possible way of measuring understanding, grasping, even hypothetically, right? Under uh, th uh, Theorizing, where does everything come from? How does it exist all the time? All we can say is everything exists because it existed yesterday, so it exists today. It just keeps going. Or like the big Greek philosopher said, there was no, there never was a beginning. Everything just always was. Which I guess you can say that it doesn't, <clears throat> it doesn't fit any sort of an, an answer except for saying something, right? Where did everything come from? It didn't come from it. It just always, always was. So I guess it fulfills the need to, to, to say something, but it makes no sense whatsoever. We're saying that everything comes from God all the time. And this is called soul viv It makes no sense how everything exists. <clears throat> but it's constant. It exists constantly. And this aspect of the creator is a gift. That's true matashem. That's separated from Hashem, and then we can feel the Creator. Hamshacha do this is what by Nidive Am it says, Nidiv Libo, the generous of heart. The generous of heart, they're the ones that make this feeling that God is creating us all the time accessible. <clears throat> Who are the generous ones? This is Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Now, this is a very basic thing in Judaism is serving God. And Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, they were the ultimate example. Oh, one second. Where is my picture over here? Oh, second. My picture one. Over here. Oh, I see. I see what I did. One second. Okay. There we go. Okay. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob are the ultimate <clears throat> example of serving God because they didn't get any rewards. They didn't see any results. God promised them the land of Israel, Canaan, and they didn't get it. Even Moses didn't get it. Moses took the Jews up to Israel. <clears throat> and Moses was like, what, 400 years after Abraham, after God promised him. So 400 years of, of constant work, serving God every second, without seeing any results, and <clears throat> not being disappointed. It, did, it didn't discourage them at all. And Abraham served God in one way, and Isaac in another way. And that's what we learned before is called self-sacrifice. <clears throat> this total constant self-sacrifice that Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob had for this enabled us now to reveal the essence of God. Hamshach Hazu, this is by means of Nedivim. <clears throat> this is this by means of the namely Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They're called the Nedivim, they're called the generous ones, they're also called the shepherds of the Jewish people. He nadvan, a person who is generous, who bechinas mashpia, he gives mituvo lezulaso from him good from his good to others, whether they deserve it or not. Kena roa, also a shepherd, he shepherds the sheep, the miratov, and he gives them good food, give good grass, mirez like fodder, I guess they call it food. Umachel umashke otam, and he gives them to eat. The same thing, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They were the founders of the Jewish people. They provided this food, which is called Sobiv Kolomim, the essence of God, to the world. Like it says, Nedive Amim Ne'esfu, like it says, the, these are sentences from Psalms. Nedive Amim, the, the generous of the people gathered together, Imelokei Abraham. 
to make him to make with that God elevates the Jewish people to sit them, to make them sit with the the generous ones. In the Divi Amo to the generous ones. Who are the generous ones? Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Like it says, Karova Nadive Amama. Satisfied like the the, um, the 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 generous ones of the people. Shamaisa Abbas, that what Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob did, Haya was Lachfor Beros, especially was to dig wells. Abraham dug them, and it says, and the police team covered them over, and Yitzhak revealed them again. And all of the wells that were dug in the days of Abraham. Let us see where we go. Next page. <clears throat> it says Satmu police team. It says the 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 police team uh, the, 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 uh, closed them up. <clears throat> Here we go. Uh, like this. <clears throat> they dug wells. A bear, the whole idea of digging a well, this is revealing water from what's concealed. Physically, the water comes from below. <clears throat> but spiritually, and that's where Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob did their main work, everything they did in the physical world was to make spiritually revealed in this world. The water is above us. The, of the heavens, Shamayim is called the heavens, Shamayim, water. So it's Asian, fire and water. This is to bring <clears throat> God's revelation from concealed <clears throat> from the earth. Shekol Masim, that everything they did was just to bring, bring this level of Soviet calming, the creator, Bechinat Helem, which is concealed, Begilit to be revealed. Bechinat Mamali Kalmin, that there should be in the world. <clears throat> so that eventually everyone will feel, everyone in the world will feel, I am very lucky. I am being created by God. And I am even more lucky. I have a job. God gave me a job. He's creating me. And I have a job. I can never be fired from this job. It's constant, constant creation and constant responsibility. <clears throat> that makes a person feel good. Uh, the Lubavitcher Rebbe was very against retirement, because retirement means a person goes, oh, now I can rest. So you want to you rest, it's not long, you're going to rest in the grave. Rest in peace. You want to rest, you want to do nothing, that's the opposite of, of the reason you're here in the world. <clears throat> right? You, you, you want to stop this job and do another job? Maybe, okay. Maybe, probably not. <clears throat> Says the whole idea of what man is here is in order to work. So he says, okay, work for who? For who? Who are we working for? We're working for the creator of the universe. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't feel it. That's called exile. If you don't feel that you're here working for the creator of the universe and the, how much God loves you and he's creating you for free, whether you work or not, <clears throat> the why shirk responsibility of this wonderful job that you can do, why not do it? <clears throat> it says that that's the whole idea that we are being feeling that we're being created and we're being feared, created for a purpose this Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob brought into the world that's every instant of their life was devoted to this I am being created and I'm being created for a purpose to improve the physical world serving the creator that's, a, that's what it means to bring so we've called me which is God's essence, the creator, into Mamalikom, into the creation, into the world. That was the Taklit Kalmasim. That's what they did, every deed and all their service, every single minute of their life. And that's why they're called Nedive Lev. They're called the generous of heart. He, because of Kodesh Baruch Hu, because God, Nikr B'Shem Lev, God is called the heart. And they were Nedive, they were the generous of heart. They made God, so to speak, generous. That we could feel. I'll do it much like it says, Tzur Levavi. Kihine, behold, the lave, the heart, Mechaya is called a goof. The heart enlivens the whole body. Why? Because it's circulated by means of the heart. They are done by means of the blood of the soul. Shenizgar betocho, that the blood which is contained inside of the heart. 
and afterwards niftach v'yotze, and afterwards the heart opens up these valves, and it, the blood goes around to all the limbs. The tummy is so gerbo poteach. The heart is always closing and opening up. Poteach was so ger, opening up and closing. Sheiki who bechinas because the heart is in the level of rutz of a shov, like we said, going and coming back. Mashpia amakabel, giving and receiving. That's what it means. Responsibility <clears throat> that we're responsible to the world, and we receive because we fulfill our responsibility, so we receive inspiration. Satisfaction. That's what God is, and that's what Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. In other words, in simple language, to make life dynamic. What's going to happen when the world is filled with godliness? The world is going to be dynamic, right? All these other religions say we're going to go to heaven, it's going to be quiet, and it's going to be this, and we're just going to have pleasure. That's the worst thing. <clears throat> True, listen, in heaven you feel godliness and all the angels are all blazing up. But the main thing is, is in heaven you, you're like in the you're in, in like the home for the aged, right? You just receive all the time. Right? They come and they say, We remember, we remember your valor and your heroism in the war, and we want to give you another another medal. And so, another medal every year. I get a medal, and everybody comes to the clap. I, ask, I want to be back out there fighting again. I want to be doing something the the the, the, the real thing was what I, what I did in order to earn these medals. That's what I want. I'll give the medals away. Who cares about the medals? I was, everybody appreciates what I did because it was a great thing. The same thing, God appreciates what you did because it was a very important thing what you did. I want to keep doing that important thing. I want to keep serving the creator of the universe. <clears throat> and that's called Rosh show dynamic. Everything is dynamic. Mashiach is going to make everybody busy. No one's going to be able to rest. And that's the greatest rest of all. That's the greatest rest of all. When you know that every moment of your life is meaningful. They say doing nothing is the hardest job of all because you can't take a rest. You're doing nothing. Right? You hear? Ruts of a show. To be active and to, to, to contribute. And anytime you take a rest is only just that it helps you to work better afterwards. Deeper, more meaningful. Ruts of a show. <clears throat> that's why God is called the heart and the blood is the energy and the inspiration and the life force that he gives to everybody so it'll come back to God and then go up. <speaking in Hebrew> giving and receiving. <speaking in Hebrew> so it is the life force of all the worlds. He <speaking> in <Hebrew> It's a way of going and coming back. <speaking in Hebrew> and this is called <speaking in Hebrew> this, this drawing down of godliness to be going and coming back. This came from Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Why? Because in Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, they themselves personified this going and coming back. We'll see. That's why they're called Nadivim. They're called the generous ones. He made a social Avram because the thing of Abraham, this was love. <clears throat> Abraham was Allah ben Asua. Abraham, it says that he traveled south, going and coming back. And by means of this... Moreover, Abraham aroused above that God would do the same thing. Kamayim lepanim lepanim. And like we said so many times before, Abraham he aroused God to be revealed. But where did he reveal? It explains that he, God was revealed from the seventh heaven to the sixth heaven. So in other words, Abraham didn't really see the results of his work at all. <clears throat> Even more, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Moses, David, King David. Right, Ezra, all the great people, Rabbi Akiva, all the great people that came afterwards, all the great people, the Talmud that says that each one of them had the power to raise the dead. The Talmud. <clears throat> that was the, 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 what a thousand how many years after Abraham? A thousand five hundred years, six hundred, almost two thousand, two thousand years after Abraham. <clears throat> no, not two thousand years. Uh, it was, uh, yeah, one thousand five hundred after Abraham, <clears throat> and it says that they. All they wanted was one thing, Mashiach. The whole idea of Mashiach is that Hashem, the Creator, will be revealed in this physical world, and the world will be a dynamic world. Positive. <clears throat> People will use all their energy instead of to kill each other and to destroy and to do these terrible things. As, and they'll use it only for positive things to, to serve the Creator, to be partners with the Creator and helping the creation God create, making a good world. 
That's what Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob began. That's what Adam was supposed to have done, but he didn't. It had to wait for, what is it, you know, 2,000 years until Abraham came along. <clears throat> this aspect of Yitzchak is fear. Abraham is love. Yitzchak, his main thing is awe, fear. Pachad Yitzchak Hoyali. says fear by means of Yira. So Abraham, is, so to speak, is going to God. And Yitzchak is like coming back, coming back into the world. And therefore it says, the God of Abraham, the God of Yitzchak, the God of Yaakov. When we pray, <coughs> when the Jewish people pray, religious Jewish people, we say, blessed are you, God, the God, our God, God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. Why the, each one? First of all, why even mention? Just say he's our God. But okay, we want to give them an honorable, honorable mention. So say the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. No, we don't say it. We say the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob separately. Why? How many gods are there? It says there's one God, but there's let's three in general ways of serving him. From love, from awe, and from balance. From balance. Love and fear and balance. In any case, three aspects of, of serving God in general. And those, of course, breaking down, broken down to thousands and thousands of other in other places, it says there's seven corresponding to the seven different uh, st uh, stems of the menorah in the, <clears throat> in the temple. <clears throat> in other places, it says there's 600,000 ways of serving God. <clears throat> Each one is a different spark, a different aspect of how to serve God. In any case, every Jew is different, every human being is different, and every and serving God is a little bit different from each one, but it's all the same God. <clears throat> the idea is, is to reveal, it's a, 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 why do we say each one, the God of Abraham, the God of Yitzhak, because the, the personality of one is not the same personality of the other. And there has to be, so there has to be two ways of serving God, right and left in general. He, here we talk about Abraham and Yitzchak. He's smaller. <clears throat> Yaakov, that's the, really the, the possibility for diversity. Yaakov is, is, is called splendor, beauty. <clears throat> okay, but generally there has to be Avram and Yitzchak, Abraham and Isaac. They are the, really the two fathers of Judaism because the left hand is under my head and the right hand embraces me. That the left hand, that's Yitzchak, that's under my head, and the Yamino is right arm, that's Abraham. Shagam al is small, that even by means of the left hand, which is usually pushing away, it doesn't mean pushing away, <clears throat> it means pushing away the bad. You have to forcing yourself, like we said before. This also causes the raising of the head. That's okay, but that's what we said before. Remember, how do we learn <clears throat> that first of all, you have to accept the yoke. Force yourself to do what God wants. Force yourself. And that's called Kabbalat Ol, accepting the yoke. And that says, reveals the glory of God everywhere. That's the aspect of Yitzchak. And a lot of, we'll see other places, the Yitzchak, he's the one that's going to bring the future redemption, Ata Avinu. <clears throat> Small docha. But then there's the aspect of Abraham that's giving from above to below. That's the Nediv Lev. That's called Nediv Libo. Yaviyahu Trumas Hashem. There has to be both. We said the heart also gives and it comes back. So it has the aspect of Abraham and of, but the real father of Judaism, that's Abraham. That's love. The main aspect of God is love. That he gives. Oh. <clears throat> I know, I'm shocked. This is drawing down the Torah from above to below. That the Torah, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. That's what it means, called Nadiv Lev. That's what it said at the end of the sentence. <clears throat> All those of a generous heart. Who is the generous heart? Abraham and Yitzhak, especially. They will bring the truma, they will bring the gift of God to the world. Hainu, namely, drawing down the Torah. The Torah came from above to below. And the Torah, that's called Yayin Veshem, and it's called wine and oil. Wine is usually Gvura. That's like Yitzhak because it's red. And Shemen is, flows down, usually is coming down. That's more the aspect of Abraham. Anyways, if we remember before, remember we learned, like, what is it, I think on, on Monday, was it? We talked about how <clears throat> the serving God, by means of forcing yourself, is like matzah. Do you remember we learned that? 
whether the Jewish people got out of Egypt and they counted the Omer and they worked for themselves. But first of all, they had to have the step number one, the basic of it was matzah. And matzah was humility. <clears throat> matzah was surrender. Remember we learned that? Matzah was total surrender to God. That began the whole process. The Jewish people ate matzah. Then, only after they ate matzah did they leave Egypt and they started counting the Omer and in fact, they ate matzah for seven days, it says in the Torah. They, and, and they had to put a humility and the surrender and kabbalat ol, accepting of the oak, into all the seven aspects of their soul. Then they could do spirit to Omer, then they could receive the Torah, and etc. They said that was matzah. Matzah was the, 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 the food of poverty. Lechem oni. You had to realize how poor you are. You're nothing, and everything you have is constantly a gift from God. Remember that we learned? So that's one way of serving God. We said that was bringing the gift to God. Truma le Hashem. But now we're talking about Truma Hashem, drawing down God's kindness into the world, physical into the world. Says the Rebbe, that's also matzah, but it's called matzah ashira. It's called rich matzah. And what's rich matzah? Rich matzah, <clears throat> rich matzah is uh, the same thing as matzah. What is what is matzah? Matzah is water and flour. That's all there is, water and flour. Matzah ashira is also also only has two ingredients, but it doesn't. Water isn't one of them. Water isn't one of them. Or maybe you can say it is water in in another form, wine or oil or fruit juices, something like that. M matzah like that you can't use. <clears throat> for the night of Passover, but it's not it's not chometz, it's not chometz. You can eat it on Passover. It's permissible to eat on Passover. You can't use it for the commandment of eating matzah because matzah has to be poor bread, a rich. So it says, and this is this is a different type of matzah. The first type of matzah we talked about is breaking yourself and making yourself, forcing yourself to do what God wants and to refrain what God prohibits, forcing yourself. But this is matzah shirat enjoying, enjoying what God wants and being disgusted by what God prohibits. That's called matzah ashira. That's rich. <clears throat> that's what Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, that's what they felt. They felt godliness. They didn't care anything about themselves. They were happy to serve God. They were happy even to suffer for God. I mean, they get, the Abraham had 10 terrible tests. That's called matzah ashira, rich. Hanelusha, which is needed from wine or oil. She'enu bo, it doesn't come chumetz. It can't become chumetz. It's not, uh, it's unleavened bread. Unleavened. So it says, chometz, it can't become chometz at all. So it's rich, but still, so it has the, 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 the quality of yourself. You're doing it, but it also has the quality of <clears throat> being humble. That it can't become chometz. There's no egotism involved in it at all. <clears throat> and that's the second level. And that's really what Mashiach is going to reveal in the world. Nedavas, nedavas Hashem, the gift of God to the world. So if so, now we can see, let's just do the sentence over here. Okay. We, got, we got a lot. Oh, and so now here, here's the sentence. What happened? What happened? Oh, here it is. Take, so again, God tells Moses to tell the Jewish people, take from yourselves Truma to Hashem, that's from below to above. That's what you have to do. That's by means of humility and Kabbalah all. And then it says, call Nedive Leib, but the Nedive Leib, that's Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, they brought down to us, Truma to Hashem, the gift of Hashem to us. And that's this higher type of serving God. The first is like regular matzah, poor bread, and this is like matzah ashira, <clears throat> that pleasure in serving the Creator. Okay, good. Now we have a little bit of time left over over here, so let's use our time properly, right? How are we going to use it properly? Watch this. Watch this, what we're going to do now. Let's see if we can do this here. 184. We'll try it. We'll try it. We'll begin. Am I going to get the right page? No. no, no, no. One second. We'll start a member of, of, uh, of um, Purim. Huh? Talk about a little bit Purim. Here we go, 184. What page is this? This is this is it. This is it. I got the right, I got the right page. Here we go. 
There we go. Okay, so maybe we'll even stop this and we'll, should we stop or should we? Maybe we should just, all right, let's do it anyway. Here we go. Um,